Let us start out with a little prayer. Dear most gracious, great, and good God. Yes. Lord, we come saying thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for another opportunity to come into your house and to give y'all praise, oh, yeah. glory, and worship. Yeah. Lord, how we love you and how we magnify okay. your mighty and marvelous yeah. name. Yes, Lord. Oh, yeah. God, stand up in this your servant and preach and proclaim yeah. your holy word. Yes, Lord. Let the studies that I have put in be so ever present before you. Yes, Lord. Lord, I pray for this pastor and I pray yeah. for this church, yeah. this body of believers, God. Bless them with whatever that they need, whether it be yes, financially, yes. mentally, yes. physically. Yes. Give them the insight and the capability to, to continue on. Yes, Lord. To continue to do your work. Yes, Lord. God, we love you. We yes, praise Lord. you. Yes. We'll be swift, quick, and careful yes, to give y'all praise, glory, and honor. Yes, Lord. Send the magnified, merciful, and majestic name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 Once again, I want to say good morning, church. Good morning to this illustrious pastor, Pastor Chirity, a friend of mine. Before I get started, let, let me say this about your pastor. Um, he is one who is not afraid to share the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is one who has passion. Um, you can see it in the spirit. He loves with his heart wholeheartedly. And I just want to say thank you. Let, let us give God a hand clap of praise for the past. Bring greetings from the Great Commission Baptist Church in Fort Worth, Texas, where our pastor is none other than the Dr. Douglas E. Brown. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, see familiar faces in the crowd, our dean. As uh, Pastor Chilton was telling you, an honorable man. Uh, dean Elza, we appreciate your support and everything Amen. that you do. Amen. Not only in the church, but outside the church. Amen. The Bible says that we should go out That's beyond right. these four walls, yeah. Uh, yeah. preaching and teaching the gospel. Yeah. So thank you, sir, for all that you do. Uh, I don't want to hold you long, uh, but for our time that is to share, I want to read from 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 1 through 9. Y'all can say, hold up, preacher, if you ain't got it. Y'all can say, carry on if you do. <laughs> 1 Kings, chapter 19, verses 1 through 9. And the word of God reads, Ahab told Jezebel everything that Elijah had done yeah. and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Mm -hmm. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah mm -hmm. uh, saying, May the gods punish you or punish me and do so severely if I don't make your life like the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. All right. Then Elijah became afraid and immediately ran for his life. Wow. When he came to Bathsheba, that belonged to Judah, he left a servant there, but he went on a day's journey into the wilderness. Mm -hmm. He sat down under a broom tree and prayed that he mm -hmm. might die. Mm -hmm. He said, I have had enough. Lord, take my life. For I'm no better than my father's. Then he lay down and slept under the broom tree. Suddenly an angel touched him. The angel told him, get up and eat. Then he looked, and there at his head was a loaf of bread baked over hot stones and a jug of water. So he ate, and he drank, and he lay down again. Right. Then the angel of the Lord returned to him for a second time and touched him. And the angel said to Elijah, get up and eat or the journey will be too much for you. Mm -hmm. So he got up, he ate, and he drank. Mm -hmm. Then on the strip of that food, he walked for some 40 days mm -hmm. and 40 nights to Horeb, 
which is the mountain of God. Right. He entered a cave there and he spent the night. Suddenly, the word of the Lord came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? For our time that is to share this evening, I want to preach to you from the subject matter of I've reached my breaking point. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've reached oh, yeah. my breaking point. Church, allow me to pose a question to you this evening. This is a question that I've asked myself on a plethora of occasions. And that question is, what is it about the mysteries of our mysterious God? Mm -hmm. What is it about the mysteries of our mysterious God that in order to bring about prosperity, he first gives us pain? Oh, yeah. What is it about the mysteries of our mysterious God that in order to give us peace, he first gives us problematic predicaments. Yes. What is it about the mysteries of our holy and divine God that in order for us to enjoy mountaintops, we must first endure miserable battles? Mm -hmm. What is it about the mysteries of our mighty and magnificent God that in order for us to be blessed, we must first be burdened down by the weight, woes, and waves oh, yeah. of this world. Oh, yeah. What is it about the mystery oh, yeah. of our gracious and great God mm -hmm. that in order for us to be first, that we must first be last? Yeah. Church, yeah. what is it about the mysteries mm -hmm. of our righteous and omnipotent God that in order for us to receive our heart's desire, we must first surrender it all mm -hmm. unto him? Yeah. Beloved, I ask you, what is it about the mysteries mm -hmm. of our eternal an everlasting God, that he will take a tree, sacrifice the son of that tree, so that you and I may experience eternal life yeah. on today. Family, I pose these questions to you, and I've listed some of God's wonderful attributes in order to tell you on today that while loving the Lord is that while serving God wholeheartedly with all of your mind, body, spirit, and soul, mm -hmm. that there comes a time in the life of each and every believer that you may look unto God and say, Lord, I've had enough of these tests, trials, mm -hmm. and tribulations oh, yeah, because yeah. God, I've reached yes. my breaking point. Y'all, yeah. yeah, yeah, come on, y'all, come yes, on. Uh, I, I know you saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I know most of us have been to the water and we've all been baptized. Uh, uh, you've got Jesus as your Lord and Savior oh, yeah. and you're feeling all right about it. Oh, yeah. But you can take out that high heavenly hand oh, in front of me oh, because as believers, all of us up in here, up in here, been here, have been to a moment within this Christian world yeah. where we yeah. are simply been all we can be. Yeah. We've done all we can yeah. do. Oh, yeah. We've given all we can yeah. give. Oh, yeah. And at night when we are in the middle of our own praying, God, yeah. prayer, we're simply looking up to God in heaven for some answers. Yeah. Yeah. Saying, Jesus, please take the yeah. wheel. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because we've reached. Yeah. We've reached yeah. 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 But here in the church, once we've gotten mm. to a place in which mm. we've reached our breaking point, mm. God has not placed us there for us to become a sad sobbing supple of our own circumstances. Okay. But God has allowed us to go through that valley in order for us to depend and in order for us to grow closer unto him. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. For church, if we never fell down, how would we know what it meant for God to yeah. lift us back yeah. up? Yeah. You see, church, while serving God, we cannot be nor should we ever become crybabies and are chronic complaints. Mm -hmm. right. In order for us to be Christians that mm. feast on meat mm. versus Christians that still sip on Mama Similac milk, if you know what I mean, <laughs> we, we must have a divine set disposition. Yeah. We must have a direct discourse in uh -huh. which we say to ourselves, no matter how harsh the pain, Come no on. matter how rough and tough the Lord allows yeah. it to yeah. get, no matter how many times I experience headache, heartbreaks, and he heartache, on Christ, this side of rock, we must stand. Yeah. Because as Christians, we know all other standing boys are nothing but sin. Okay. Yeah. We've got to boldly, we've got to courageously stand upon the word of God, church. Amen. And Pastor Chilton, uh, may I encourage you today as we celebrate yeah. you on your 12-year anniversary. Mm -hmm. Pastor, when you're feeling all pastored out, when you're feeling all preached out, and when you're feeling all okay. prayed down, yeah. When you feel like you've got nowhere to go and you've got no one to turn to, 
please refer back here to 1 Kings chapter 19. Oh, yeah. And just like Elijah, may you too eat the bread and yeah. drink the water so that you may have strength. Yeah. 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 I ain't talking yeah. about the bread that comes from a bakery. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't talking about the water that comes yeah. from a well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But Jesus said in the book of John, I am the yeah. bread yeah. of life. Yeah. 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 Whoever comes yeah. to me shall have yeah. a hunger. Yeah. Yeah. And he goes on to tell the Samaritan woman, yeah. he says, look, I am the living water. Yeah. Whoever oh, drinks yeah. of me shall never yeah. thirst yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. Pastor Children, after you've eaten from that bread, and after you've drinking from that cup of everlasting water, may God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, yeah. give you the strength to stay yeah. so that you may continue on your yeah. journey yeah. Yeah. so that you may finish. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Church, the race is not given to the sweet. No. And the path of righteousness is not always cool, calm, and couch. No. If I heard the psalmist say when he must have been dealing with some stress and some struggle in his life, the psalmist wrote the, the song and said, Father, I stretch my hands oh, unto yeah. this step. No other help I know. Mm. But if I withdraw thyself yeah. from him, yeah. God will her. Shall I go? Yeah. In church, we have nothing and we are nothing but the Lord our God by our mind. Yeah. 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 And yes, to bro. this beautiful body of believers, mm -hmm. may I offer you words of comfort this evening. Mm -hmm. If you're feeling like on today that you've arrived at a point which you've reached, you've reached your breaking point. Yeah. Yeah. Paul wrote to the church of Galatia and said, let us not be weary in well-doing, yeah. church. For in due season we shall reap a harvest if we faint not. All I'm trying to tell y'all, beloved, is that once we've reached our breaking point, the Lord is simply saying to us, it's not the end, child of God. It's only the beginning. I encourage you on today to journey on with the God of our salvation, church, for there is nothing our God cannot do. Yes, sir. The Lord Jesus Christ, he'll, he'll see you through but the first thing that we can exegete from this scripture reading, and one of the first points that pop off the page to me, Reverend Elsie, is Elijah's fear. Mm, yeah. yeah, yeah, Elijah's fear. Yeah. This is my first point of reflection. Yeah. For the Bible says in verse 3 that Elijah was afraid, and immediately Elijah got up and he ran for his life. Yeah. Where are you going to, Elijah, and why are you running from the place in which right. the Lord has positioned you to be? I mean, can y'all see it, church? Yeah. This can't be the, the mighty Elijah. Isn't this the same Elijah that spoke the word of God into a dying woman's life? And by that word, not only did that woman live, but her whole entire household was provided for. Yeah. I mean, isn't this the same Elijah that yeah. prayed unto God and he spoke a word over the dead body of the yeah. widow woman's son? Yeah. And by that word, the Bible says that God listened to Elijah. I mean, what manner of man is this that, that God would listen to yeah. a finite man? Yeah. But the dead son was, was risen from the grave. Yeah. Isn't this the same Elijah that by the power of God, mighty and miraculous miracles were performed at Mount Carmel? Yeah. And Elijah slayed the 450 prophets of Baal yeah. there. Oh, yeah. Elijah, what are you doing running from the words of that old Amen. wicked Jezebel? Amen. Elijah knew that God was mighty. Elijah knew that God was strong, yeah. and Elijah knew that there was nothing God with God uh -huh. could not do. Uh -huh. But now here the text, fear seems to overwhelm Elijah, yeah. and he goes on the run for his life. Yeah. And church, at least I paint too pessimistic of a picture about the life of Elijah. Mm -hmm. Allow me to take a jog down memory lane mm -hmm. into the life of you and I on today. Okay. Uh, some of us, we have been a part of this redeemed crowd for for many years, Mother yeah. Chilton, we are the devout servants of the Lord our oh, God. Yeah. We have tried him, and we have learned that there is nothing our God cannot yeah, do. Yeah, but right. at the time of trouble, yeah. affliction, and suffering within our lives, just like Elijah in the text, we seem to develop a strong case of amnesia. <laughs> Forgetting about who God is and how God has delivered yeah, us yeah, from our yeah, life, right. pearls, and pain yeah, some time and time again. And church in our moot, minute and minimal mindset, when we forget about God, the enemy begins to play mind games. Okay. And the next yeah. thing you know, instead of us running toward God, we right. begin to run right. toward God. Right. 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 Yeah. Oh, I hear you. You say you need some biblical examples, huh? Come well, come here, Moses. You remember yeah. Moses, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Moses, he slayed the Egyptian for beating on the Israelite. Yeah. And the next day when Moses returned to the Israelite encampment, the Israelite spoke and said to Moses, 
Oh, you want to kill me just like you went and killed the Egyptian? And out of fear, listen to me, church, out of fear of those words reaching uh, the ears of Pharaoh, Moses got up and he ran for God. Yeah, and he spent yeah. 40 years on the backside of a mountain yeah. before he could ever return to Egypt and free the Israelites from captivity, a place in which 40 years prior, God had already positioned him to be. Right. What about those children of Israel? Yeah. The, the Israelites were delivered out of bondage right. by the mighty hand of our miraculous God. Yeah. I mean, let's look at what God did for the Israelites. He, he parted the Red Sea. Yeah. Uh, uh, he, he, he made a, a rock turn into a well of water. Yeah. I mean, God showed his mighty hand on many other occasions to yeah. Israel. Mm -hmm. And God took Israel to the land flowing with milk and honey. Yeah. And when they arrived at the promised land, the Israelites sent out scouts to survey the land. Okay. Uh, when yeah, the scouts returned, they, they said, and they came back with a negative report because they said the land is filled with different people. Yeah. They've got giants in the land. They've yeah. got warriors in the land. Right. We can't go take this land because if we go and try, we will die. Mm -hmm. But listen yeah. to the words of Joshua and Caleb, church, because mm -hmm. they stood before the entire Israelite community and said, they said, God is with us. Yeah. We must go and take this land. But out of fear, the Israelites ignored Joshua and Caleb's plea for obedience to God. Instead, the Israelites walked away from the promised land, turning yeah. their backs on God, thus spending 40 years on the backside oh, yeah. of, uh, of the wilderness because their fear led them instead of their faith. Yeah. And what about that hard-headed preacher Jonah? Y'all yeah. remember Jonah, don't you? Yeah. Uh, Jonah received a word from God saying, Jonah, get up and go preach to the great city of Nineveh. Yes. I mean, yes. literally, in chapter 1, Pastor Children, verse 1 of, of the book of Jonah, uh, God tells Jonah, get up and go preach to the Ninevites. Yeah. Yeah. And watch the move of this hard-headed preacher next. Because verse 3 of Jonah says that Jonah got up to flee to Tarshish from the Lord's yeah. land. Yeah. You see, the Ninevites, they were, they were great enemies of Israel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jonah must yeah. have feared for his life when he got the call from God to go and preach to his enemy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, church, in that moment, yeah. Jonah yeah. must have feared the wrath of his enemies yeah. more than he reverenced the power of God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Family, fear, watch this. Fear has a sneaky way of creeping in, yeah. seeping in, yeah. and staying in. Oh, yeah. Because our faith cannot be the ultimate power in which God leads us because the fear in our life will cast aside too much doubt. Yeah. Our faith should be leading us, church, not our fears yeah. and not our doubts. Yeah. For we know that our faith is the substance of things hoped for, yes. but it is the evidence of things unseen. Right. Yeah. And how can we have a strong faith, Pastor Children, if we are fearful of the things that we see? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why the Bible says, according to fear in Joshua chapter 1, listen to these words. God says, fear not to Joshua, mm -hmm. for the Lord your God is it's with you. Yeah. Now here in the church, we're, we're all human, right? right. Mm -hmm. So we all have these human emotions. Oh, yeah. And that's why Paul tells us in Romans chapter 12, he says, look, you guys, you've got to renew your mind on the renew day and basis. Mind. Listen to these words by the Apostle Paul. Paul tells us that we should not be conformed to this world, yeah. but that we should be what? Transformed, Transformed. by the renewing yeah. of our oh, mind. Yeah. We must keep our eyes focused on Jesus, oh, yeah. Jesus yeah. being diligent in the faith. Standing on our post like a watchman on the watchtower yes. with our minds stayed yes. on the Lord. Yes. That's why I can hear our ancestors in the old Negro church. Uh -oh. I'm talking about the one with the wood panel floor oh, and yeah. the uh -oh. AC unit hanging out the window. Oh, yeah. With that old yeah. dusty chandelier hanging oh, out the top yeah. of the ceiling. Oh, yeah. Our ancestors, they would sing and they would say, I woke up this yes, morning Lord. with my mind stayed on the Lord. Yeah, yeah. yeah. stayed stay on the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Church, we, we've got to keep our minds staying on Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. But the next point that we can pull from this passage of Scripture is Elijah's faith. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm so glad about it, church, that after we see Elijah down in the dumps of distress, right. despair, right. and dysfunction because of his fear, we then see the Lord speak a word into Elijah's life. Mm -hmm. And God restores Elijah's faith yeah. by giving him instructions on what to do next. Yeah. Somebody ought to tap your neighbor and tell them, God will order your steps. Yeah. 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 Amen. The Bible says that underneath that old broom tree, Elijah prayed for death. Elijah says to God, God, take 
my life yeah. because I've reached, I've reached my breaking point. Yeah. Yeah. But what is it about the mysteries of our mysterious God yeah. that when as believers we are broken, battered, and bruised, yeah. God then says to us, you are now prime candidate okay. to be used for I my glory. Yeah. 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 Can you see it, church? Mm -hmm. Can you see God maneuvering and working through yeah. the life of Elisha? Yeah. Well, if you need another biblical example, let's take a light look at the life of Gideon. You yeah. remember Gideon, don't you? Yeah. The angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon in his weakest moment mm -hmm. because the Bible says that the Midianite army came and attacked and they plundered and they took everything that the Israelites owned. Yeah. Yeah. Gideon was making food and he was, yeah. he was hiding his food out of fear that the Midianite army would come and take it, yeah. just like they came and took everything else that the Israelites owned. Mm -hmm. The angel of the Lord spoke and said to Gideon, he says, Gideon, go and slay the mighty army of the Midianites. Right. Yeah. Gideon says to the Lord, look, Lord, I, uh, I'm the, my family is the weakest in the land, and I'm the youngest in my family. How can I go and complete such a possible, impossible task? Yeah. Yeah. God then tells Gideon, get up and go, for I am with you. Yeah. Somebody I'll tell your neighbor something about having a great I am on the side. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, watch what the Lord does next in these divine orchestrated events. Because Gideon goes with his army of 32,000 men to defeat the army of the Midianites. Yeah. The Lord said to Gideon, look Gideon, you got too many got people too many. for me to win you this war. At least Israel might boast in our own might. Oh, yeah. And the Lord said to Gideon, you need to leave behind 31,000 700 men. So Gideon, he obeyed the Lord our God. And Gideon took 300 men to war. Yeah. That army of 300 men, church, they went out and killed an army of 135,000 Midianites yeah. by the mighty hand of our mighty God. Yeah. What is it about the mysteries of our God? that God takes away before he can ever add all yeah. unto us. Yeah. Yeah. But at least I journey too far away from the text, church, because now with his faith restored, Elijah is headed on a journey mm -hmm. of his own. Mm -hmm. God tells Elijah, get up, eat, yeah. and yeah. drink, or yeah. the journey will be too much yeah. for you. Right. And yeah. the Bible says that Elijah obeyed God because he got up from his, his self-pity party, yeah. he yeah. ate, yeah. and he yeah. drank, okay. and he started yeah. on his yeah. journey. Pastor Chilton, when we are obedient yeah. to the voice of God, yeah. when we place our faith in Him, He'll give us what we need. Oh, yeah. 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 Let us remember, church, that Elijah, he parks it underneath this old oak tree yeah. in the middle of the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And yes, Elijah obeyed God, thus his faith had been renewed. But let us not forget who the preparer of this wonderful meal that he ate was. Right. The Bible says that Elijah was awoken by the words from the angel of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And when Elijah looked, there was a loaf of bread baked over hot stones, and there set before him a jug of water. Yeah. Church, there was no five-star chef in the middle of the wilderness. No. But, but Elijah, he called upon the master chef, mm -hmm. the one that never stops feeding yeah. our soul. Yeah. Remember, church, Christ said, eat of me. For I am the bread of life. And Christ also says, drink of me also. For when you drink of me, you will know that I am the water that gives eternal life. So yes, God provided bread and water physically for Elijah. But Elijah's spirit man needed to be renewed also. Because Elijah had reached. He had reached his breaking point. So Elijah, he ate. And Elijah drank physically. But he also eats and he also drinks spiritually. Because God gives him a word and he tells him, get up, Elijah, because I've got a journey for you to attend right. to. And because Elijah has now heard a word from God, church, he's got the spiritual food that he needs mm -hmm. to get up and to continue on the path that the Lord has set out for him. Yeah. Our spiritual food that we eat today, church, is the word of God. Yeah. And that's why I love the word of God, and that's why I love the Lord. But not only do we see Elijah's spirit in the text, church, not only do we see Elijah's faith in the text, church. But we also see Elijah's faith, F-A-T-E, in the text. Right, and this right. is my final point of reflection. Now I know that when some of you hear the word faith, you think the end of something has come, right? Mm -hmm. But listen to the Google definition of faith. It says that faith is the development of events beyond a person's control, mm -hmm. regarded as and determined by a 
of supernatural power. Okay. Elijah's faith was not his end, but Elijah's faith was a place in which he needed to be so that he could be with his God. Okay. The Bible says that Elijah eats and Elijah drinks, and he goes on a 40-day journey. Yeah. And at the end of this 40-day journey, he reaches Mount Hor. All right. Now, here's a, a biblical fact about Mount Hor. It's the same mountain in which God gave Moses the Ten Commandments in Exodus. Yeah. Right. That at the time of Moses, this mountain was called Mount Sinai. Right. Now we see the same mountain here in 1 Kings when Elijah seems to be in some dire need of some restoration, rejuvenation, and rehabilitation. Okay. God seems to be telling Elijah in his weakest moment, Elijah, you don't need death. You simply need me. Yeah. And family, here is some biblical application for you and I today. Because God is telling us the same thing that he told the prophets and the people in the books of the Bible. God is saying, children, you don't need sex, drugs, and power as a means of escape from your pain. God says you don't need to modify your mood by sniffing white stuff through your nasal passage. Mm -hmm. Don't y'all act like we've been saved now. <laughs> God says you don't need to indulge in sexual immorality no. in order to get you a good feel. No. God says you don't need to kill, steal, and destroy no. in order to move up the world socially. Yeah. Okay. God is telling you and I today, beloved, uh, that when all hope seems to be lost, mm. when nothing seems to be working in life, mm. when the husband or when the wife is gone, oh, when the yeah. kids have went wayward, yeah. when there is no money in the bank, yeah. uh, when every Everybody has turned their back on you yeah. when you've reached your breaking point. Yeah. All you need to do is call upon the name of God. Yeah. Yeah. You need to get you a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. 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 I heard the psalm say, I, I love the Lord yeah. because he heard me. Yeah. And he pitied every yeah. brother. Yeah. And as long as I live, when trouble rises, yeah. I will. I hate I'll hate yeah. 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 Elijah's fear led him down a dark, deadly, and desolate path. Right. But all glory be to God, church, that God shows up on the scene, right. and God restores Elijah's faith. Oh, yeah. But not only was there a restoration of their church, but look at the provisions made by God. Yeah. Because God gave Elijah what he needed to continue on his journey. Yes. Yes. Pastor Chilton, he'll give us what we need oh, yeah. to continue on our journey. Oh, yeah. But not only did God give Elijah what he needed physically, God also gave him what he needed spiritually yes, because yes, God yes. set up a faithful meeting with Elijah right. at Mount Hor. Right. Church, I'm so glad about it. Yeah. That once we have reached our breaking point, yeah. and all we have to do is call upon the Lord. Yeah. And yeah. the Lord will show up okay. on yeah. our behalf. Yeah. And yeah. He'll yeah. give us exactly what we need yes, to sir. continue yes, on sir. through our journey. Yes, That's really all I came to tell you today, church. Mm -hmm. I've come to prove, preach, and proclaim to you yes. that once we've gotten to a place in which we've reached our breaking point, we need to continue to trust in the Lord. Oh, yeah. and he'll right. give us instructions on what to do next, yes. and God will <coughs> carry us through. Mm -hmm. But as I as I come to a close, because I, I've held you entirely too long, right. Right. me and my wife are on the way to get us a two-piece uh, I want to say good evening to y'all and may God bless the United Missionary Baptist Church. Real, real good. Amen. But one day, church, we too will have a meeting place with God. Yes. A place in which there will be no more tears, dear. Yeah. And a place in which there will be there will be no more pain. Yeah. A place in which, Pastor Chilton, there will be no more suffering. Yeah. And a place in which yeah. all pain will cease to exist. Wow. For I heard the Apostle Paul say, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time yeah. are not worth comparing with the eternal weight of glory that is going to be revealed to us one day. Right. For as believers, we know that when this old earthly dwelling is destroyed, yeah, when the, yeah, yeah. the flesh has no spirit, and when it returns to dust. Yeah. We have a building from God, not made with fleshly hands. Yeah. Indeed, church, we be grown in yeah. this body, yeah. desiring to put on a dwelling from heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Knowing that when we are clothed with our glorified bodies, yeah. we shall never be naked again. Right. We have this eternal dwelling from God, yeah. And we have eternal life through faith, belief, hope, and trust yes. in the God-man, Jesus. Yes, sir. Jesus the Christ. Yes, sir. Jesus 
yeah. Jesus the Christ. Well, he stepped down from some heaven and he rolled the sea of destruction uh -huh. for some nine long months in the womb yeah, of a virgin who right, knew right. no man. Yes, Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Jesus the Christ. Yeah. He was born in a tiny town called Bethlehem uh -huh. on the backside of a local inn. He was laid uh, in a manger. Uh -huh. At the age of 12, he was found inside the temple complex past the children he was schooling all the sky. <laughs> At the age of 30, he started his ministry and while doing God's work, Jesus the Christ, he performed all kinds of miracles, yes, sir. like yeah. healing the sick and yeah. like raising the dead. Yes, With little or no food, some 5,000 souls he fed. Yeah. Jesus the Christ, he unstopped their fears. He gave sight to the blind. Yes, he was arrested yeah. for a crime yeah. that he did not commit. Uh, yeah. And Jesus the Christ, he stood before the Sanhedrin yes, Council of Jews. He stood guilty of nothing, but Jesus was accused uh -huh. of everything. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. I'm so glad that the accusation that were against me was 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 against yes. Christ. Uh, yeah. he, he stood before Pontius Pilate, yeah. and Pilate replied to the Jews. He said, "Look, I wash my hands of this man's blood." Yeah. Pilate yeah. seemed to be telling the Jews, "This blood is for y'all." Yeah. So as Pastor, as you said early on, it's not only for the Jews. But it's for the Gentiles yeah. as well. I'm so glad that Jesus Christ came yeah. and shed his blood for you and I today. I said it before, I say it again, and I keep on saying it until God calls me in. Jesus went to Calvary yes, to yeah. save a ranch yeah. like you and me. He died on a Friday, but early Sunday morning, he was risen from the grave with all power in his hand. Faith in Jesus Christ is the only way to eternal salvation. Church, when you reach your breaking point, yeah. yeah. continue to trust in the Lord our God, yeah. and He will see you through. Yeah. Yeah.